Golden Globe Awards have announced that they are introducing two brand new categories to their already useless, useless awards. Uh, now, look, I, I've, I've been traditionally very hard on the Golden Globes. I don't think their awards are worth the, the paper that the winners' names are printed on. They're completely useless awards because they're run by the Hollywood Foreign Press, which is a completely useless organization. That being said, they put on great award shows. Their awards are meaningless, but they put on much better shows than the Oscars do. Even the Oscars have way more meaning. Well, they've had a bunch of controversy here and there. Obviously, we won't go, go over all of it. They've had a lot of controversy. They were just recently bought, I believe, by Dick Clark Productions. Yep. I think that's who bought the Golden Globes and the Hollywood Foreign Press. So it's now under new management, and maybe they'll be, be able to make it something into something more relevant than what it was before. Well, they've introduced two categories. One of them's pretty good, and one of them is really stupid. <laughs> uh, I'll let you guys determine which one I think is which. This comes to us from Variety. The Golden Globes Awards will introduce two new categories to its upcoming January broadcast. Variety has learned exclusively. The categories will honor hit movies with global reach in either box office or streaming views. This is their version of Best Blockbuster Award. As well as an acknowledgement of the best performance in a stand-up comedy special. Now, obviously... Their best blockbuster movie is the most idiotic thing in the world. The Oscars almost did something like this. Thank God cooler heads prevailed and they didn't do something so stupid. I'm going to talk for a second in a minute about the stand-up comedy special because I actually like this edition. I, I do. But let's focus on this idiotic best global reach at the box office movie. Anyway, Variety says this. Titles must have grossed. Here's their definition of blockbuster. $150 million during release, and $100 million of which must have come from domestic box office. Streaming films with, uh, uh, I always stumble over this word, commensurate yeah. viewership will be considered based on data from recognized industry sources, the Globe said. Eight films will be eligible for that prize and can also compete for categories like best motion picture, drama, or comedy as long as they meet criteria for those. Okay, so you got to be a blockbuster. Blockbuster, really? Blockbuster, you need to make $100 million at the domestic box office. And that's our category, Black But I just want to bring this up. By that category alone, forget the streaming movies. Well, there's already been 20 films. We're only in September. There have already been 20 films that have made $100 million domestically. Scream 6 qualifies for best blockbuster. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, How Mutant dare Mayhem. You. How dare you? But, but I mean, come on. I love the movie, right? You know I do. I know, it is yeah. not a blockbuster. It does not deserve to be up there with movies like Barbie that has made like $1.4 billion when you're talking about block. So this, even this whole term, what you're really saying is this isn't a best you know success at the box office. It's like best movies that didn't totally flop at the box office. That's really what this award could be called. But I mean, even with The Flash, that wouldn't be really true. You know? I mean, that's the problem is that you, you've got something like The Flash here, which is a flop, and then you've got Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles that maybe broke even, so yet they still qualify. I know. It's really weird how they're defining this. I think it's utterly stupid. I thought it was stupid when the Oscars were going to do it. Look, you're either giving out awards based on merit or you're not. What's the best movie? Not what's the best movie that came out on a Wednesday whose assistant director had the last name Smith and was made for $20 million. Like it just becomes a participation <laughs> award. Yeah. Either these awards are supposed to be based on merit or not. And I don't, there's nothing about the, the, the amount of box office that most movies make are not a reflection of the quality of the movie. Sometimes they are, sometimes they're not. There've been several transformers movies that have made over a billion dollars. All right. I, I, I rest my case. So I think that's absolutely idiotic. But let's focus on the positive for a second. I actually like, and how often do you hear me say I like something that the Golden Globes are doing? Not often. Considering that the Globes give out awards for movies and television, the whole thing on TV of the stand-up special, comedy special, has been a rapidly growing thing the last number of years. And quite frankly, some of the best stuff that's on Netflix and, and things like that, I mean... My God, that Joe Coy in Hawaii comedy special was hilarious. And who's the girl? Ali Wong. Ali oh, my Wong. God. Her latest special just about made me piss myself. It's She's so hilarious. funny. But, I mean, I 
I don't usually like the idea of putting in qual categories where there's very, very small number of potential, even potential nominees. This is a growing field. It's kind of a subgenre of to itself in on-screen entertainment. And uh, listen, I got to give credit where credit's due. I kind of like this idea of doing best stand-up comedy special. Guys, we want to take a second to thank a sponsor of this video, Vessi. Now, like me, I'm sure a lot of you guys have heard of Vessi, the shoe that claims to be incredibly comfortable and waterproof on top of that. Well, these claims are really interesting to me because as a Canadian who walked around in a lot of snow and as somebody who likes to go camping and hiking with his wife on the weekends, there's nothing more uncomfortable and horrible than walking around in wet feet. So after receiving my first pair of Vessis and noticing how incredibly good looking the shoes are and how mind boggling comfortable and flexible they are, the first thing I did was I took them into the backyard to put it to the supreme waterproof test and dipped my feet in my pool. Guys, my feet were bone dry and like 20 seconds after having them in the pool and I touched them, the shoes themselves were also bone dry. Guys, seriously, these shoes are stupidly comfortable. They look great and they absolutely lived up to the claim of being waterproof and keeping my feet dry. I absolutely love my Vessi shoes. So guys, if you want shoes that are good looking, are ridiculously comfortable and on on top of all that waterproof, you need to head to Vessi.com slash Campia and get yourselves a pair today. Go to Vessi.com slash Campia and get shoes for your best summer yet. Anyway, Chris, here are a couple of announcements coming out of Golden Globes. Both good, both bad, one good, one bad. What do you think about the announcement? One's good. I think the <laughs> AV Club set at this best with their headline for this of the Golden Globes makes a play for relevance. <laughs> ah, yeah. And that's what this is. Now, the stand-up comedian one totally makes sense because comedians go hand-in-hand -hand with the Golden Globes, whether they're hosts or just very present there. And to your point, too, comedy specials have had this huge boom in the last few years just because yeah. of the accessibility of them. And the simplicity to produce them. Exactly. And, you know, you've got things, too, that really are innovative. Like, Bo Burnham's Inside was one of the most interesting things I've ever seen mm -hmm. that was simultaneously hilarious, weird, and heartbreaking and the exact kind of thing that encapsulated what the pandemic felt like. Um, you've got, you know, Baby J, you've got Ali Wong stuff, you've got all kinds of really cool specials out there. So that one I can see, and I understand the the merit in that process. The blockbuster one. Yeah. Hearing that makes me feel like Martin Scorsese of just cinema is dying. <laughs> cinema is dying and we must save it. Because uh, it, it really is. It's grasping at straws and trying to get an audience to come hang out with you because there's a popularity contest involved. Yeah. And this has also always kind of been part of the problems with the Golden Globes is that it doesn't feel as prestigious. It feels more gimmicky. It feels less like a, a deserved win. And while it can forecast other, you know, things to come like the Oscars, it really does feel like the prelims kind of at a speech and debate tournament. Yeah. Before you go to the big show. Well, let's see if Dick Clark Productions can do something with it to make it relevant. Yeah. I mean, obviously they, this is going to be their first show that they do under new management. We got to give them a couple of years to see what they can transform it into. Uh, getting Tina Fey and Amy Poehler back to host sometime would oh, be- They were so uh, good. They were so good as hosting together. Anyway, whatever you guys think about this whole thing, maybe you like the idea of, oh, your movie made money, here's an award. It seems idiotic to me, but maybe some of you guys can see merit in it that I haven't found yet. Whatever you guys think, let us know. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching this video. Make sure you like the video, leave a comment, and subscribe to our channel. And don't forget, we have a daily podcast called The John Campia Show Podcast, available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or your favorite podcasting app of choice. Go and subscribe to it today so it'll be there when you need it.